वेलकम टू माई लाइव टीचिंग लर्निंग सेशन ऑफ इंडियन इकोनॉमी बी ई सी ई वन फोर्टी फाइव टूडे वी विल स्टार्ट इंडियन इकोनॉमी पार्ट वन इन दिस इंडियन इकोनॉमी पार्ट वन फर्स्ट यूनिट एंड द टॉपिक नेम इज इंडियन इकोनॉमी ऑन द ईव ऑफ इंडिपेंडेंस टूडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द कंडीशन ऑफ इंडियन इकोनॉमी at the time of independence we know that indian economy was under british rule near about 200 years britishers exploited india very badly and india's condition was stagnant very static condition at the time of independence indian economy was underdeveloped or backward economy or stagnant economy at the time of independence so what are the features of indian economy at present and what was the features of indian economy on the eve of independence how britishers exploited india and which sectors they affect badly and what progress they done in primary sector secondary sector and tertiary sector so today we will discuss about indian economy on the eve of independence this is unit 1 of the paper bece 145 indian economy part 1 now indian economy on the eve of independence here we will discuss about focus of economic policies of britishers in india and their impact britishers ruled over india near about 200 years and they exploited india in each and every sector they make those policies they made those policies which were beneficial for their own country england not for indian economy their main purpose was to exploit india and to withdraw or drain all the available resources which are necessary for the development of their own country first of all the industrial revolution started in england when britishers started industrial revolution in their own country they need raw material for smoothly running of their industries and they knew that india was abundant at that time india was abundant of raw material which was very helpful for the industrial development so britishers make colonies or colonialism or rule over india and they drain all the available resources or raw material for the development of their industries that's why they mainly colony or they mainly ruled over india so here focus of economic policies what are the main economic policies of britishers which impact india very badly the concern totally with protection and promotion of their own economic interests britishers all policies related with their own economic interest they made development but only for their own economic interest not for the development of indian economy the sole purpose to reduce india into a raw material supplier for britain's own rapidly expanding industrial base the main interest of britishers was to run smoothly their industrial sector and they want to develop more economic progress and promotion in their own country and they need raw material and at that time india was basically a predominant on agriculture sector 
and as you know that agriculture is the main source of raw material and agriculture supports industrial sector because most of the industries are based on agriculture sector because they take raw material from agriculture sector and industrial sectors are those sectors which converted raw material into finished goods so britishers that's why they make made colonies in india and they drain raw material and wealth and other resources which were abundant in india they want to drain all the available resources which are necessary for their own country's development but not for the development of indian economy that's why let's systematic decentralization of india the impact of britishers policy and their uh, role was that india turned into supplier of raw material for very low prices and consumer of finished goods or industrial products at much higher rates at that time when britishers exploited india and drain all the available raw material or resources from india to britain they sent all the raw material so india turned into the supplier of raw material india was a producer of uh, agriculture product uh, industrial product but at that time when britishers ruled over india then india turned into supplier of raw material for a very low price and india was the consumer of all finished industrial products which was supplied by britain in india so the main impact of britishers policy on india is india turned at that time india turned into the supplier of raw material for very low prices and consumer of finished industrial products at much higher price it means the main gain the main advantages was taken by britishers not by india because india supplied them raw material at a very lower price but when they sell their goods to the indian economy country people they sold all the products all the industrial products at higher prices so they exploited indian consumers to sell goods at higher prices and to purchase raw material at a lower prices from india this was the main impact of britishers policies next is introduction now indian economy what type of indian economy is we know that indian economy is agriculture based economy agriculture is the backbone of indian economy because agriculture is the most important occupation for most of the indian families when india were dependent on britishers or when india was dependent then near about 80% of the country people were engaged in agricultural activities that's why we can say that agriculture is the backbone of indian economy because most of the country people are still at present more than half of the country people are engaged in agricultural activities but at the time of independence or before independence when india was uh, colonized during british era at that time near about 80% of the country people were engaged in agricultural activities in india at present agriculture contributes in gdp 16% but during britishers rule at that time agriculture contributed in gdp was 58% or near about 60% 60% contribution was made by agriculture sector in gdp 
but at present his uh, contribution is uh, falling from 60% to it is now 16% but it is uh, very high if we compare indian contribution of agriculture sector in gdp to other rest of the world or developed countries in us say only 1% 1% contribution in GDP of agriculture sector. And in other developed countries, near about 1 to 10% in between of this range, agriculture sector is contributing in GDP. But India's contribution at present of agriculture sector in GDP is 16%, which is higher than developed countries. But it is lower of the Indian economy when during British era, this contribution was near about 60%. Contribution is still falling and it's fall from 60% to 16%. And 10% contribution of agriculture sector in net exports or total exports. That's reason India secured second position worldwide in terms of farm output. This is the introduction of Indian economy. That Indian economy, we can say that Indian economy is still predominant on agriculture sector and agriculture is the backbone of Indian economy. At present, agriculture give contribution in GDP is 16% and in total export, the contribution of agriculture sector is 10%. And uh, more than half of the country people are still dependent on agriculture sector at present, which were earlier near about 80% people were engaged in agriculture and its allied activities like fishing, quarrying, mining, etc. And about 43% of the geographical area is used for agricultural this is the introduction of Indian economy. What type of Indian economy is at present? Next is causes for stagnation of Indian agriculture during colonial period. During colonial period or British era, Indian agriculture sector was stagnant. And they started so many systems, so many policies in agriculture sector. Like one is land revenue system was fixed by Britishers. Second is forced commercialization of agriculture. They converted agriculture sector from subsistence to commercialization for self-consumption to production for sale or commercialization of agriculture, they forced farmers to adopt commercialization of agriculture sector. And during colonial period, partition of the country also helped. First is why the agriculture sector remains constant or stagnant or backward during colonial period. What were the reason behind that? The reasons for one is land revenue system. In this land revenue system, Britishers started Jamidari system. They appointed Jamidars, which taken the revenue, which collected the revenue from the farmers and deposited it to the Britishers treasury. So this Jamidari system, Jamidars were the middlemen between Britishers and farmers. Jamidars take, Jamidars took uh, revenue or taxes from the farmers and give it to Britishers. They charges, they charged higher higher taxes 
near about 70 to 80 percent they fixed the rent of 70 to 80 percent which was very higher at the time of colonial period that's why they jamidars too much exploited farmers in form of second thing was which existed during colonial period britishers forced indian farmers to commercialize their agriculture sector what is the meaning of commercialization of agriculture commercialization of agriculture refers to that sector in which production of crops only for sale in the market not for only self consumption they forced farmers to produce more crops to sell in the market not only for the self consumption production not for self consumption production of crops for sale in the market that is called commercialization of agriculture sector next is cultivation of commercial crops they forced farmers to produce indigo indigo means dye which is necessary for coloring the cloth they forced farmer to produce indigo or dye which is necessary for britishers industry cloth industry for dyeing their clothes that's why they forced indian farmers to produce indigo rather than food crops like wheat rice sugar they stopped these types of crops growing they forced farmers to produce only indigo which is necessary for their own industries and occurrence of famines at that time because when we exploit too much land area and when we produce that type of crop which is infertile or which uh, erodes our soil that is that was the main cause of occurrence of famines due to this less self consumption and larger part of produce for market sale this is the meaning of forced commercialization of agriculture which was started by the britishers during colonial time period and third was partition of country you know that india got independence in 1947 15th august 1947 firstly when britishers ruled over india at that time india and pakistan are not the separated country both are same both are in called in a single country india but at the time of independence our economy our indian hindustan was divided into two parts one is india and other is pakistan and most of the fertile land area went to pakistan and most of the illiterate population went to india so this was the main crisis of partition that most fertile land area went to pakistan and least fertile area or infertile land area and barren land area or illiterate population went to india that's why partition of the country created food crisis in india because india has had no fertile land area when we have no fertile land area then how can we produce food crops so food crisis arises at that time second was rice food producing area of west punjab 
and Sindh went to Pakistan. So this was the impact of colonial period on agriculture sector. These are the main causes for the stagnation of Indian agriculture during colonial time period. First is land revenue system, which was started by Britishers. Under this system, Jamidari system was imposed on Indian farmers and they collected high revenue, high rent from the farmers of their crops and exploited too much of farmers. Second was forced commercialization of agriculture. Under this system, production was forced of all the crops which are necessary for the sale in the market, not for self-consumption. And they forced farmers to produce more commercial crops like indigo and occurrence of famines. Due to this, agriculture sector was stagnant and consumption production was only made for uh, sale, not for self-consumption. And partition of the country also stagnant the Indian agriculture sector due to food crisis in India, which occurred because all the fertile land area went to Pakistan during partition of the country at the time of independence and rice food producing area like West Punjab and Sindh went to Pakistan. These are the main causes of agriculture stagnant situation at the time of colonial period. Next is agriculture sector on the eve of independence. What was the condition of agriculture sector on the eve of independence? Not in colonial period, after independence and on the eve of the independence, what was the condition of agriculture sector? So the condition of agriculture sector was very bad because there was very small and fragmented land holdings and the farmers were only less land area or less than one hectare or less than two hectare land area they have, which can't produce too much production. So small and fragmented land holdings, land holdings is the area of land held by a family. But at the time of independence, the land area was scattered or fragmented or divided into very small parts and farmers have very less land area near about one hectare or less than one hectare or less than two hectare land area they have only on which they can't produce too much production they can't use mechanization they can't uh, use modern technologies for the production of uh, crops so the condition was very bad. Second is outdated technology. At that time, when the when India got independence, at that time farmers mainly used outdated technology or old techniques of production was used. Inefficient use of fertilizers was used in agriculture sector. That's why agriculture production was very low. Third is dependence on rainfall. At that time, India mainly dependent on rainfall for irrigation. There was no irrigation facilities like tube wells or mm, canals, rivers or wells. At that time, farmers were dependent on rainfall. If rainfall was good, then crops was in bumper when rainfall was bad or then famines occur when rainfall is was too much then flood occur and agriculture was excessively dependent on rainfall that's why we can say that agriculture is the gamble of monsoon fourth point is the condition of agriculture sector on the eve of independence was very low at that time, the production of agriculture was very low. It means the low level of production and productivity. Output per hectare was extremely low. 
Fifth point is on the eve of independence, agriculture sector was known as subsistence sector or subsistence farming. The primary object for a person was to produce for his own family, not for sale. But during colonial period, farmers mainly produce for sale in the market, not for self-consumption. Because at that time, agriculture sector was commercialized and they forced farmers to commercialize their agriculture sector. And the sixth point is wedge between wedges gap, gap between owners and tillers of the soil. At the time of independence, there was a huge gap between owners and tillers of the soil. Owners never shared cost of output, instead they shared output. So these six points indicated that at the time of independence, Indian agriculture sector was very in a bad situation and agriculture sector was fragmented, stagnant and land holdings were stagnant or fragmented. Farmers were mainly dependent on rainfall for irrigation. There were no fertilizers, no use of fertilizers or modern technology at that time in agriculture sector. That's why production was very low and productivity of the soil was very low. And the, there was a huge gap between owners and tillers of the soil. And the farmers mainly produce goods or crops only for their subsistence or uh, their main objective was to produce crops only for their own family, not for sale in the market. Next is Indian economy during 1950 to 1990. What role agriculture sector play in Indian economy? Indian economy is the agriculture based economy and uh, Indian economy we can say that India at present agriculture sector near about more than 50 percent of the country people are still dependent on agriculture sector or Indian economy is mainly predominant on agriculture sector so that we can say that agriculture is the backbone of Indian economy. Agriculture contribute in national income. The share of agriculture sector in national income is at present 16%. But at the time of independence or during colonial period, it was 60%. Agriculture is very important or very necessary or very helpful for the industrial development because agriculture provides raw material for the industrial sector and industrial sector use that raw material and convert it into finished goods. So industrial sector or industrial development can't happen without the development of agriculture sector because most of the industrial sector or industrial areas mainly use raw material which, will, which they are getting from agriculture sector. Agriculture contribute in foreign trade, near about 10% contribution of uh, Indian agriculture in total exports. It is very, agriculture sector play very important role because agriculture is very necessary for our survival because uh, agriculture provide us uh, food and without food we can't survive, we can't live. That's why it is very important in household consumption and it is also important for trade and services. So agriculture play very important role in Indian economy because agriculture is the backbone of Indian economy. Agriculture gave more contribution in GDP. Agriculture gave most of the country people engagement in agriculture sector, gave more employment opportunities to the country people because at the time of colonial time period, 70% or 80% people were dependent on agriculture sector, but at present, more than half of the country people are still dependent on agriculture sector. It means it provides large share in employment. And it is basis for industrial development. It contributes in total exports or foreign trade. It is very important in our consumption level. 
it provides us food which is necessary for our survival and it is significant for trade and services so without agriculture we can't survive and we can't we our economy can't run smoothly our economic all sectors like secondary sector and tertiary sector can't move without agriculture sector so agriculture sector is the base of overall development of the country next is indian economy on the eve of independence what were the features of indian economy at the time of independence indian economy on the eve of independence was called stagnant economy backward economy underdeveloped economy due to highly exploitation of the britishers britishers exploited indian economy in each and every sector they exploited they exploited agriculture sector they exploited industrial sector only they promote service sector because railway was started by britishers only for their own interest not for the development of the indian economy and they mainly drain all the wealth which is available in indian economy and when india got independence in 1947 the condition of indian economy was very bad what were the features the features of the indian economy were at the time of independence were first is low level of economic development at that time our economic development was very low second is agriculture sector was very low because uh, agriculture sector in this sector there were so many causes responsible for the low productivity in agriculture sector which we have studied right now like uh, scattered and fragmented land area heavy imposition of taxation by zamindars on farmers and uh, no fertilizers no uh, irrigation facility was available at that time and production and productivity the productivity level of the soil was very low that's why agriculture sector was very weak or backward and at that time industrial sector was developing on the eve of independence developed industrial sector because industrial sector was developed and started to develop uh, during the second five year plan first five year plan was made by our prime minister pandit jawaharlal nehru in the leadership of uh, prime minister pandit jawaharlal nehru first five year plan was set up during 1951 to 56 but that plan was basically of agriculture based plan in 1956 to 61 second five year plan was launched and that plan was basically for the development of industrial sector so on the eve of independence industrial development took place and industrial sector uh, was developing at a higher rate at that time foreign trade was very low and adverse demographic condition foreign trade was low means exports was less and imports was higher demographic condition was very bad because after 1921 india's population has been increasing and you know that india is second most largest populated country in the world so demographic condition of the economy on the eve of independence was adverse or bad india's infrastructure was very underdeveloped or weak infrastructure at the time of independence and in occupation sector occupation sector is uh, com- is the combination of three sectors in which we include three sectors one is primary sector second is uh, industrial sector third is service sector these three sectors are included in occupational structure but 
at the time of independence our occupation structure was very unbalanced and there were more dependency on primary sector because most of the country people were engaged in agricultural activities so these were the features of indian economy on the eve of independence and to see these features we can say that indian economy was backward economy stagnant economy at the time of independence next is features of occupational structure occupational structure is the combination of all three sectors like primary sector secondary sector and tertiary sector all three sectors included in occupational structure some people are engaged in primary sector some people are engaged in secondary sector some people are engaged in tertiary sector you know that some people those who are engaged in agriculture and its allied activities and um, that is called agriculture sector some people are engaged in uh, making a finished goods or in industrial sector they are converting raw material into finished goods so occupation structure of indian economy is still very unbalanced because this occupation structure is not equally divided means uh, not equally country people are engaged in all three sectors in primary sector or in agriculture sector more than 50% of the country people are still dependent and remaining less than 50% people are dependent on industrial sector and service sector so agriculture sector is predominant of agriculture sector india is still predominant on agriculture sector because agriculture is the primary source of occupation 75% of population engaged in agriculture sector manufacturing and service sector account for 10 and 15 to 20% respectively and imbalanced economy because occupation structure is imbalanced or not in balance because uh, all people are not equally divided into three sectors some people are engaged in industrial sector some people are engaged in tertiary sector but most of the country people are engaged in agriculture sector that's why we can say that our occupation structure is imbalanced or unequal and here predominance of agriculture sector still exist at present and growing regional variations also many states witnessed shift from agriculture sector to manufacturing sector and tertiary sector so this is the features of occupational structure in which we classified into two parts one is predominance of agriculture sector and other is growing regional variations next is policies of british rulers that led to exploitation of indian economy as you know that uh, britishers the aim of the britishers was to exploit indian economy to withdraw all the available raw material from india and send and send it to britishers british or england for the development of their industrial sector so no protection was provided to india's infant industries for a quite long time they exploited india's industrial sector handicrafts industry and they put more tariff policy in india so they give no protection no protection was provided by the britishers to india india's infant infant means small scale industries cottage industries tiny industries are called infant industries they don't protect india's infant industries for a quite long time and heavy import duties were imposed on the use of indian ships for trading between england and india third is financial and banking institutions were not promoted in the country so the policies which made by britishers was lopsided means 
the policies they made only for the development of their own country not for the development of indian economy that's why we can say that the policies of britishers that led to exploitation of indian economy the these policies are heavy import duties no financial and banking institutions were set up for the promotion of indian economy and no protection was provided to india's infant or small scale industries for the development they spoiled they abolished all the handicrafts industry they decay the industrial sector of the indian economy so these policies are really very exploited policies which exploited indian economy very much or badly low level of economic development under the colonial rule at the time of independence or under britishers rule the economic development of the indian economy was very low india had an independent economy before the advent of the british rule before the starting of britishers rule india was independent economy india had an independent economy before the advent of or before the uh, starting of uh, britishers rule or colonial time period though agriculture was the main source of livelihood and most of the country people were dependent on agriculture sector yet the country's economy was characterized by various kinds of manufacturing activities india was particularly well known for its handicrafts industries in the field of cotton and silk textiles metal and precious stone work etc so under the colonial rule before the starting of colonial rule india was independent economy and agriculture was the main source of livelihood but the economy was characterized by some various kinds of manufacturing activities also and india was particularly well known for its handicrafts industries which were decayed by britishers or abolished by britishers in the field of cotton and silk textile india was very well known country of these types of handicrafts like silk and uh, silk and cotton textiles metals and precious stones but britishers exploited india too much now what was the condition of foreign trade at the time of independence or during british era india has been an important trading nation since ancient time but the restrictive policies pursued by the colonial government adversely affected the structure composition and the volume of india's foreign trade first of all you must have to know about what is foreign trade foreign trade means to do exports and imports with rest of the world we know that indian economy is open economy and at the time of ancient time period indian economy was at that time open economy india do trade with rest of the world at present also and we are exporting so many goods and we are importing petroleum machines heavy chemicals and other products we are importing from rest of the world at that time the trading partner of the india was during british era or colonial time period the main trading partners were india and usa uh, usa and uh, sorry britishers or england because england mainly uh, import raw material from india and exported finished goods to india during the colonial time period india was the importer of finished goods and exporter of raw material at that time india exported raw material to england 
at a very lower price and India purchased finished goods from England which was available at very higher price. That's why India's payments were higher than receipts. Debit items were more than credit item. Due to this balance of payment remains always unfavorable or negative. So during colonial time period, India's foreign trade was remains always in adverse situation or always remains unfavorable or in deficient. And the composition of, composition means the items which we do imports and exports. As I told you that India was the exporter of raw material at that time and importer of finished goods. These are the, these are considered as composition of foreign trade. And volume of India's foreign trade, direction of India's foreign trade directions means India basically trade, trading partners of the India was at that time only USA and Britain. These two countries were the main trading partners of the India's foreign trade. Next is state of foreign trade during the colonial rule, Britishers monopoly on foreign trade. At that time, Britishers were taken monopoly power on foreign trade. Britain maintained monopoly over India's exports and imports. As a result, more than half of the India's foreign trade was restricted to Britain only. And India was the net exporter of raw material and importer of final goods. Britishers opened the Suez Canal through that canal, they exported India's raw material to Britain and imported finished goods from Britain to India. In 1869, Suez Canal was opened and avoided to sail up around Africa, reduction in cost of transportation. Why this Suez Canal uh, was opened by Britishers? To uh, reduce the cost of transportation and to avoid to sail around Africa. They want to reduce cost of production, cost of uh, transportation. That's why they opened Swiss Canal. That's why easily they can export finished goods to India from Britain and they can import raw material from India and send it to Britain easily. They drain India's wealth Huge export surplus due to huge export volume. Export surplus used to benefit Britishers and to import invisible items to incur expenses of war fought by British government. All the burden of war which was fought by British government, but they shift the burden of war on Indian economy. That's why they exploited Indian economy during colonial time period. Next is demographic condition. What were the demographic condition uh, of Indian economy at the time of colonialization? Various details about the population of British India were first collected through a census in 1881. You know that India India first calculated the population of Indian economy at the time of Britishers or British rule in 1881. First population census was started by Britishers during the time period of 1881 to estimate the country's population. The year 1921 is called the Great Divided Year because before this year, India's population was in negative. Means in India, death rate was higher than birth rate before 1921. But after 1921, India's population remains always in a positive rate. Uh, in India, 
at present birth rate is higher than death rate before 1921 india's population was dynamic in nature sometimes our growth rate or population growth rate was in negative but after 1921 india's population growth rate remains always in positive that's why india's population is increasing continuously and at present india is the second most largest populated country in the world after china so that's why 1921 time period is a very important time period and it is known as year of great divided because this year onwards population has been growing continuously and rapidly high birth rate and death rate it was at the time of independence it was 48 birth rate was 48 per 1000 and death rate was 40 per 1000 birth rate was higher than death rate high mortality rate it was around 18 per 1000 low life expectancy at the time of independence it was as basically the age the people expected to live that age was only 32 years at present this life expectancy age is 65 years which is also very less uh, if we compare with other nations or developed countries india's life expectancy expectancy rate is still very low and mass illiteracy according to census 1941 which was uh, last census under british rule literacy rate was only 17% it means near about 80% of the country people were illiterate or uneducated so these are the features of demographic condition next is industrial sector at the time of independence india's industrial sector was also very backward or underdeveloped india could not develop a sound industrial base under the colonial rule even the country's world famous handicraft industries declined at the time of britishers era no commercial modern industrial base was allowed to come up this sector needed modernization diversification and increased investment but at the time of colonial period industrial sector was totally destroyed or abolished by britishers because they want to promote their own industrial sector not india's industrial sector that's why they drain all the available resources from indian economy and india's wealth they drain all the wealth all the available resources for the development of their own country own interest that's why india's industrial sector was very backward and agriculture sector was also very stagnant and growth rate of agriculture sector was very low at the time of britishers time period next is britishers imposed heavy duties on exports of handicrafts and britishers make tariff policy they make that type of tariff policy in which imports prices they keep low and exports prices they remain they keep high so they want to take advantages from exports and imports both advantages went to britain india at that time indias were exporting too much raw material to britain but not getting any advantages of large surpluses of exports all surpluses of exports and all gains from exports and imports were taken by britishers not by india that's why indian economy condition was very bad at the time of independence next is role of industry in the economic development the industries in india can be classified into many parts two types of industries are basically we can classify one is organized industry and other is unorganized industries 
both type of industries are important for large country with a huge size of population and it play very important role in the economy of the country so industry play always very important role for the development of the nation without industrial development we can't develop service sector and we can't improve agriculture sector industrial sector is the base of overall development of the country so we must need to promote all the ag industrial activities or all the organized and unorganized industries in a large country with a huge size of population and it can also play very important role for the development of the country next is estimation of national income during the colonial time period at that time period never made sincere attempts to estimate india's national income and per capita income india's national income was not estimated during british era but some individual attempts were made to measure it and these attempt and initiatives were taken by some prominent persons they are called like dada bhai naroji william digby findlay shiras dr b k r v rao and r c desai <coughs> they estimated national income but not accurately but after independence national income can be measured with the help of three methods one is value added method other is income method and third is expenditure method there are three methods of estimating national income but was developed by CSO Central Statistical Organization after independence not before independence before independence national income was estimated by some individual persons in which the name of these persons are given dada bhai naroji william digby friendly shiraz vikyar bhav and rc desai next is conclusion in this unit the first topic was the indian economic condition at the time of independence as you know that indian economy at present is still developing economy not a developed economy because india was dependent on britishers and britishers took or britishers made colonial colonialization in india and near about 200 years they started their rule and they exploited india's each and every sector very badly that's why indian economy was stagnant economy was backward economy was underdeveloped economy at the time of independence the road that india took to get its independence shows how nations and its people change in order to adjust to the world and make things at home as just and favorable as possible even if it means separating their nation in half to do it the indian people involved during their independence movement suffered a great deal in order to have their freedom although it took two world wars for them to get enough momentum to win their independence so we can conclude that indian economic condition was very bad during britishers era or colonial time period and on the eve of indian independence india's all sectors like agriculture sector industrial sector and service sector all were in bad situation thank you